morning. Welcoming a brand new day in Boyolali by looking for a parking space. I need to do my morning exercise after a long drive. Maximum 4 hour drive and then you need to do stretching for 30 minutes. Ah, I think that corner will do. I love jogging. It can easily burn 300 calories in 30 minutes. And not only that, the steady tempo keeps you from causing so much strain to the body. So, it basically builds endurance and stamina in the body without being too harsh. I also love the after effect of jogging. It's like I feel calmer, happier, and more positive about myself. Why? It is the endorphin, the happy hormones that was released when you jog. So, whenever I'm feeling down or too stressed out, I went jogging. Is that a farm? In the middle of the town? Could be, because Boyolali known as the city of milk. And who produced that milk? Right, the cows. Uh, now I'm in the farm, cow farm. Uh, I was uh, jogging before and I was hearing a uh, voice of cow. And I'm curious and I came here. I really want to learn to produce the milk from the cow. While I'm here, I want to try it. I want to learn about it. Because milk is high calcium. After running, drinking milk, The process to produce milk from a cow, uh, he needs to wipe it first, to clean it first. He clean it with warm water, because warm water is to make the milk it's easier to come out. And for daddy, he get a milk like 30 liters of milk from uh, more or less 12 cows. Pak, aku boleh coba ini ya, Pak? Iya, iya. Ini ya, ini ya. Iya. I dip my hand in the warm water first. And then I try. Harus kencang pak. Ah. Bisa. Bisa pak. Mudah ternyata pak ya. It's it's look easy. I can do it, but it hurts. My my finger is hurt. This is my first experience. Interesting. I I also like it. But I'm super slow. Baba need to be fast to doing it. So there is a like a soap on it to make it easier, like you know, cool. Matur suun, ma. Turn out, it was really hard to milk the cow. Like you need extra energy to squeeze it. But at least I got to learn another new skill. A morning well span. Looks like there is some kind of traditional market ahead. Let's take a look. I remember what Master Gu said that we have to be friendly to other people. But now, after all the calorie burning with jogging, I'm kinda hungry. What is good for breakfast around here? Hmm. Wow, this is awesome. Some street singer welcoming me to this Soto house. I think they are singing traditional song. Soto is traditional Indonesian soup made with different type of broth, 
vegetables and meat. I wonder what compost to the soto in this place. So inside this soto, there is a rice um, and then bean sprout and then um, beef with um, celery. It's fresh for me and then one thing that I found it's interesting, soto in here they have uh, achar. Uh, achar it's like, um, it's like pickles. Mm. So fresh. The soto is very fresh. Everything, the ingredients in here, it's like complete. Mantap. Beside the soto, Ibu also sell gado-gado. I will try the gado-gado. Bu, yang spesial dari gado-gado di sini apa tuh, Bu? Apa ya, Mbak? Mungkin dari sambelnya mungkin ya. Dari sambelnya, ya, Bu ya. The special gado-gado from here, it's a, um, as I see, the peanut, it's different, it's like a rujak, it's more like rujak, it's not a very soft of the peanut, and it's fresh, it's like the food in here, everything is fresh. Enak nih, Bu. Enak. Hmm? Iya, makasih ya, Mbak. Mm -mm. Cocok. <laughs> Mantap. Nah, hmm. yang terakhir nih Bu, yeah. ada dawet ya Bu ya? Yeah. Nah ini, es dawet, ice dawet. It's beautiful before I mix it. Hmm. Enak Bu? Enak dawetnya. Enak, nggak terlalu manis. Iya. Yeah. The ice dawet is very nice. It's not too sweet, and then uh, ini ibu bikin sendiri ya bu ya? Iya mbak. She made it by herself. Everything in here she made it by herself. Amazing. Hmm. I am super duper glad that I found this place. Soton Deli Boyolali. The food is nice, amazing. The additional, the dawet. The ambience, um, it's like eating with the music, it's like a fine dining actually. <laughs> and it's very unique, they're using the cello I think, yeah, I see it. It's very traditional, authentic, I love it, I love the vibes in here. The food, delicious, everything is delicious. And now I want to finish my food because I need to continue my journey. Stay tuned. I leave the city of milk behind and continue my journey to the next destination. It's a home industry that specializes in nature-based artisan cheese. Yes, we are going to Yogyakarta and visit Mazara Cheese Factory. The fresh milk that was used in Mazara Cheese production came from Merapi Mountain. There is a small group of local farmers that breed their cattle in most natural and organic way. Um, this is the milk from the farm before, uh, from the one that I tried to produce. All the milk is sent it to here, to the cheese. It's not a very factory, but it's uh, like a homemade cheese. They make sure all the cattle are grass-fed, and the grass itself has to be pesticide-free too. The farmers also assure that there is no antibiotic or any chemical treatment used for the cattle. Mm -hmm. 
Mazarat Artisan Cheese still continues the respected tradition of natural cheese making by hand. Now, I'm about to step into their production room. And of course, I need to comply every rules, especially to the one related to health. We can see how the milk is being filtered to remove the unwetted material. Keju-keju ini berisi bakteri hidup ya, yang uh, benar-benar sebuah natural cheese itu bukan barang mati. Mereka hidup, mereka growing setiap harinya. Dan sometimes uh, si bakteri ini berulah, berulah tuh dalam artian aku tidak bisa membaca kamu hari ini maunya kenapa, ada Modi. apa. Modi. <laughs> Saya pernah ada satu momen mereka benar-benar saya masukin kamar, saya ajak tidur, saya ajak cerita, pagi saya sapa, karena nggak hiling, udah lebih dari seminggu kita proses masalah, uh -huh. terus startup ini aku bawa masuk uh -huh. ke dalam kamar, uh -huh. benar-benar tak ajak, tak treat as a baby hmm. gitu, jadi aku ajak tim dia ngobrol dan sebagainya, ke style musik, butuh sekitar hampir 10 hari untuk dia kemudian Growing lagi, bagus lagi, dan baik. Wah, wow, bener-bener ya, ada. Jadi, uh, saya nggak bisa bilang ini adalah sebuah pure pekerjaan ya, karena melibatkan 100% hati saya, perhatian saya. Ya, kadang uh, anak kandung saya kalah, gitu. To produce their age and fresh cheese, Mazarat doesn't use any preservatives, additive, artificial flavor, chemical food coloring, or GMO ingredients. They only use organic ingredients, except for one enzyme that is still imported. Itu kenapa artisan disebut handcrafted? Hmm. Karena memang di handcrafted dari awal dari susu datang, sampai dia menjadi produk jadi. Tidak ada uh, default mesin resetting di dalamnya Sehingga ya itu, kenapa? Betul. Kami memilih artisan adalah secara teknis itu Dan yang kedua, uh, secara quality tak, uh, Artisan tidak bisa dikalahkan gitu. Mbak, kalau pengalaman unik di luar mbak Kayak pendapat orang lain melihat prosesnya mbak Pada saat awal kami membangun brand ini, membangun produk ini Banyak sekali yang tidak percaya gitu. Bahkan uh, Lati sampai mencibir gitu loh kita orang Indonesia nggak makan keju, kok mau boleh di mana? Even I question myself gitu, aku sanggup nggak ya gitu. Tapi ternyata makin hari sosial impact yang terjadi itu adalah luar biasa dalam artian dulu salah satu alasan kenapa saya kuat sekali mempertahankan uh, aku mau pengen melakukan ini gitu adalah karena pada saat dulu saya kesulitan tentang anak saya, pengen menolong anak saya, pilihan saya nggak ada. Indonesia tidak tersedia produk seperti yang saya butuhkan dengan harga yang terjangkau dan mudah dicari di pasar. Hmm. Tapi dengan adanya uh, artisan cheese yang bertumbuh di Indonesia, nggak cuma saya ya, udah ada banyak gitu. Dan itu minimal di pasaran, sekarang kita punya pilihan. Jangan sampai kejebak pada situasi seperti saya yang pada saat itu, jangankan bicara pilihan, hmm. nggak ada pilihan ya. Nah itu salah satu yang saya paling senang. Dan untuk mencapai di situ mbak berdarah-darah memang. Hmm. It blows my mind. It's very interesting, and then the new knowledge for me. It's very touchy story too from Banita. It start from uh, her story about uh, her son uh, to get um, a very qual a good quality food, a good thing, which is a low budget. It's super difficult in here, so it start. Uh, she started from here, from there, and then. Uh, the process, everything, it's very, I don't know, I respect and I am super proud that I can meet Benita and then hear the story. It's amazing. Ar uh, Mazarat Artisan Cheese, it's amazing. With all the story, with all the helping the people around here too. Perfect.
One thing I love about this solo trip is I get to choose the next destination as I please and no one will complain about how the place doesn't suit their interests. Now, I'm in the mood of some water experience and having a little diving would be nice. Hello! I've been driving away like so long and then this time I was like going to the mountain, camping, explore, uh, meet people, interesting people, going to Chandi but now I want to play in the water and underwater. The unique of this place is the water it's water spring, it's pure and there is like um, water coming in and then water coming out so it's always fresh and one more unique, I will swimming with the fish, uh, with a koi. It's, a, it's quite a big fish. I don't know, I will be calm or not. I'm curious about it because koi is always like coming to you and always want to know. And before I go to the water, into the water, I need to exercise because it's water spring. Water spring, it's cold. We'll see. Let's do it. Umbul Pongo offers some freshwater diving and snorkeling experiences. Don't worry, you don't need a diver's license in order to dive in here because it is located in a big pool with 2 until 3 meters deep. I'm with Mbah Gondrong right now. Sorry, it's really cold in here. <laughs> I want to have a conversation with Mbah Gondrong about this place. Uh, Mbah Gondrong, jadi Umbul Ponggo ini dulunya itu apa ya Mbah? Sejak zaman NMO yang dulu ini sudah ada sebenarnya. Kolam? Kolamnya, tetapi uh, mungkin bahkan lebih besar ya. Tapi belum uh, terbangun uh, dengan baik. Tapi uh, sudah sadar bahwa ini mempunyai uh, kegunaan bagi banyak orang. Terus kemudian ketika zaman Belanda uh, ini dipakai untuk produksi uh, gula. Jadi sebelah kiri kanan ini dulu pabrik gula. Ini dipakai untuk pendingin mesin gula juga sebagai produksi gula. Uh, kemudian ketika Belanda sudah hengkang dipakai masyarakat sekitar untuk kegiatan sehari-hari, untuk mandi, mencuci dan sebagainya. Baru sekitar tahun 2009 kemudian dikelola oleh desa lewat bumdes. Ini uh, terkelola dengan baik, kemudian jadi sebuah tempat, jadi kan sebuah tempat wisata yang yang luar biasa, yang unik. Untuk merawat tempat ini gimana, Mbah? Jadi uh, ya lumayan, tetapi nggak begitu sulit. Jadi tiap seminggu sekali kita mengadakan pembersihan di bawah kolam, kita membersihkan apa yang jadi uh, kotor, kemudian di pintu air juga, kemudian uh, bawa air sampah-sampah uh, yang tidak terurai ya, kita bawa kesalahan kita ambil okay. dalam paket sebuah. Oke. Okay. Mbah, tadi aku lihat di situ kan uh, mata air ya. Udah gitu di sana juga ada pembuangan. Jadi air ini benar-benar bersih ya? Iya, benar-benar bersih. Dan uh. kadar mineral air ini hampir sama dengan min air mineral yang dijual di warung-warung atau di toko. Oh iya, iya, iya. Dan tempat ini bersih karena ada ikan-ikan ini ya, Mbah? Ya? Iya, juga kita jaga kebersihan. Awalnya nggak sejernih ini ya? Iya. Umbul Ponggo also provide a great spot for underwater photo shoot. The ambience of the pool itself is already feel like the ocean. With fish swimming round and rotten properties covered with algae. But if you want to make your picture more unique and creative, they provide property that can be rent. Such as motorcycle, TV, bicycle, dining table, lazy chair, laptop, 
and many more. Ini tadi saya berenang nih, beda-beda. Dinginnya kok beda-beda ya Mbak? Ya, jadi di dekat mata air itu paling dingin. Berarti saat ini berkisar uh, 21 derajat Celcius. Sedang di sebelah sana ada ke uh, tadi pintu air itu paling nggak dingin itu sekitar 23 24 derajat Celcius. Tapi kalau pas di musim dingin di pas mata air bisa 90, 19 derajat Celcius. Oh, Lebih dingin ya. In here it's, uh, the cold uh, the area is different. The close with the water spring it's uh, coldest. It's like 20, right now it's 20 degrees. In the rainy season, it could be 19 degrees underwater, but in that side, it's only like 23 degrees, and it will be coldest in the rainy season also too. Water source for Umbul Pongo is natural spring water that comes straight from the mountain. That is the reason why the water is so cold. This place is amazing. The most beautiful experience that I ever had. It's beautiful, it's clear, the water is fresh, a lot of fish. I love to, to do snorkeling in here. Beautiful, I have no idea to say anymore, but it's beautiful, I love this place. And don't go anywhere, stay tuned, because I know that you're curious which place that is my next stop. The water flows out at the end of the pool, along with garbage that accidentally let in. It is Mbah Gondrong and his team talks to clean it up. <laughs> 